In ancient Rome, architect Lucius is famous for his amazing bathhouses, also known as Thermi. However lately all clients have been rejecting his ideas because they think he's stuck in the past and can't come up with anything creative. At home, his wife nags him all the time because they're low on money and he refuses to have a baby. One day, a friend of Lucius brings him to a public bathhouse because he needs to relax. However Lucius thinks it's impossible to relax there because it's filled with people being loud and nosy. Needing some peace and quiet to think, he decides to go underwater and stay there for as long as he can. At that moment he notices water moving rather quickly on a tub's wall and goes to take a closer look, only to suddenly be pulled into a hole by a strong current. For several minutes, Lucius is dragged through a mysterious tunnel full of water, but the current is too strong to swim in. Eventually the pulling finally stops and Lucius resurfaces, only to discover he isn't in the Roman bathhouse anymore. Lucius doesn't understand it but he's arrived in modern Japan, and now a bunch of old men in a public bathhouse are staring at the strange foreigner that suddenly popped out of the water. Lucius assumes these people are from a flat-faced tribe and starts investigating the place, quickly becoming amazed by all their innovations. Even simple things like baskets blow his mind, but when it comes to any machinery like the massaging device or the taps he assumes there are hidden slaves moving things. Meanwhile manga artist Mami is having her story rejected again. She goes to the bathhouse at the same time Lucius accidentally enters the women's changing room and a screaming woman knocks him out by throwing something at his head. Mommy is very impressed by Lucius' physique and immediately starts drawing him, but soon he's taken away from the women. When he wakes up, a guy shares a drink with him, even teaching him how to open the bottle. Lucius takes a sip and is so blown away by the taste that he cries before falling unconscious. When Lucius wakes up, he finds himself in ancient Rome again. The men at the bathhouse explain he drowned in the tub and was found just now. For a moment Lucius wonders if it was all a dream, but then he notices the empty bottle next to him. Two months later, the bathhouse has been completely renovated thanks to Lucius' ideas, which basically consisted of copying everything he saw in Japan. People are in love with all the little touches, from the baskets to the new drinks and little bottles, and there are even machines handled by slaves. Everyone is happy and Lucius is finally making money again. One day, an old man is relaxing in the water and wishes he could have a bathhouse like this in his own house. While underwater, Lucius begins thinking if it's possible, only to suddenly be pulled by a current again. This time he appears in a house bathroom in modern Japan and soon an old man comes in, asking him to help him wash up. Lucius is confused and doesn't understand the language, but the old man is patient and teaches him how to use every object like the shower head and the hat that keeps the shampoo away from the face. At that moment mommy enters the bathroom because it turns out this is her house. She gets super excited to see Lucius again and runs to grab her sketchbook while Lucius accidentally tries a spray that gets in his eyes. By the time mommy comes back Lucius is already gone. As soon as he returns to Rome, Lucius copies the ideas from Japan again and builds the first private bathtub. His innovation becomes a sensation once again and he makes tons of money, however at home things aren't better. His wife is still not happy because she wants a baby, but Lucius spends all his time at work. An argument ensues and ends up with the wife leaving. Sometime later, a messenger comes to see Lucius. He was sent by the emperor, who has heard about Lucius' inventions and now wants to meet him at the bathhouse. On his way out, Lucius bumps into the emperor's nephew Caonius, who is very arrogant and throws very rude comments at him. Lucius is nervous because rumors say the emperor is very cruel and has killed politicians who opposed him, but when he finally meets him, Emperor Hadrianus treats him well. Hadrianus says he loves art and thinks that what Lucius has done with the bathhouse definitely counts as art, which he proves by letting the moonlight glow into the bathhouse. In fact he's so impressed that he wants Lucius to make him his own personal bathhouse, but it must be full of innovative ideas that haven't been done yet. Lucius gladly accepts the challenge and that night he wanders around town, trying to get some inspiration to get the creative juices going to no avail. He's starting to feel bad about the fact all the ideas he's used lately were stolen when suddenly he falls into a ditch and disappears. Meanwhile mommy has taken a job at a supply store because her manga career is going nowhere, but it's so boring that it's hard to stay awake. When she accidentally leaves a tap open, a tub gets filled and suddenly Lucius appears in it. He starts panicking when he feels something strange moving around him until he realizes the tub is bubbling and staying warm on its own, which he finds very impressive. Then mommy's manager shows up and scolds her for bringing a man to work, so he orders her to get rid of him. After taking off his wet toga and covering up with a towel, Lucius starts wandering around to learn more, so mommy has to follow him and keep him away from trouble. Thinking she's working for him as a servant, Lucius gives her a coin. Soon Lucius is learning all about modern furniture and grooming products, including how calming scented candles can be. Suddenly he needs to relieve himself and runs around until he finds the bathroom, being shocked by the toilet opening on its own and thinking it's slaves again. He stares at the toilet paper while he does his thing and assumes the text is the secrets of the flat-faced tribe. The toilet has a bunch of buttons on it and Lucius tries one, activating the bidet. The sensation of being cleaned down there so gently makes him feel as if he was in heaven, causing him to cry and disappear. Meanwhile mommy gets fired and goes home with the coin and the toga. Once he's back in Rome, 
Lucius immediately gets to work and builds the perfect bathhouse for Hadrianus, adding a toilet near the tub and once again using slaves to make up for machinery. Hadrianus is extremely happy with the result and awards Lucius a special necklace shaped like a man's dong with a dog's backside. Feeling proud, Lucius runs home to show the necklace to his wife, only to find her getting naughty with his best friend. The wife yells at him saying it's because he didn't want to have a baby and the couple finally breaks up. In the meantime, mommy gives up on trying to make manga and since she can't keep a job, she decides to return to her small hometown and help with her family's inn. She can't stop thinking about Lucius, so she studies Roman history and even Latin. One of the clients turns out to be a professor and agrees to look at the coin and the toga. After running some tests, the professor confirms both objects were made hundreds of years ago. Unfortunately the inn isn't doing well and mommy's parents won't be able to support her for long, so they sign her up in a matchmaking service to find her a husband. Back to Lucius, he has fallen into a deep depression since his wife ran away with his best friend. One day he's approached by the emperor's right hand Antoninus, who is worried about Hadrianus. It turns out the emperor is also depressed because recently he lost his lover and now thinks a crocodile is his reincarnation. Lucius is given a new mission, to design a place where the crocodile can live comfortably. Searching for inspiration, Lucius goes to the emperor's bathhouse and on his way there he finds Caonius being forceful with a woman. The interruption allows the woman to run away and Caonius insults Lucius again before leaving. Once he makes it to the bathhouse, he checks the water flow of the tub and gets dragged to present Japan again. First he appears in a lake where women are celebrating a fertility festival. Thinking he's their blessing, they jump on him and send him underwater again. The next time Lucius appears in a crocodile cage at the local reserve, where mommy is having an awkward date with her potential husband. As soon as she sees Lucius, she ditches her date to save the Roman man. After an employee takes Lucius out of the cage, Lucius picks mommy up and takes her with him to learn more about the reserve's care of crocodiles and indoor plants. When he tastes a banana, he likes the flavor so much that he decides to save it and take it back home to grow more. Afterward mommy gets Lucius a yukata and takes him around town to enjoy snacks and games. Lucius shows off his archery skills and while he's distracted, a monkey steals his banana. A furious Lucius chases after the animal until he finds the hot springs, finding the idea of an outdoor bath incredibly relaxing. As he cries at the perfect moment, he sees the banana floating in the water and rushes to grab it, only to be dragged back to Rome again. A few days later, Lucius finishes designing the perfect place for the crocodile and Hadrianus is so happy that he treats Lucius as a close friend, inviting him to visit the palace whenever he wants. Sometime later, Hadrianus learns that his troops are getting attacked by rebels who want a better leader. Soldiers are sent to fight the rebels, but the rebels don't give up and the battle goes on for months. More than a year passes and Hadrianus becomes old, so he wants to retire and leave the throne to Caonius. Hadrianus sends a letter to Lucius asking him to build a new public bathhouse as Caonius's first project as emperor, that way he'll get people's support from the start. However Lucius hates Caonius and thinks his arrogant attitude will bring the fall of the Roman Empire. He decides to go see Caonius and turn down the job, causing Caonius to remind him this counts as treason and he can be executed for it. While trying to decide what to do, Lucius is approached by a rival architect, who is furious because since Lucius became popular he didn't get any work and now he's broke. A fight ensues and the man injures Lucius with his sword before pushing him into a well, causing him to travel back to present Japan. When Lucius wakes up, the old men of the inn are taking care of him and Lucius notices the warmth coming off the ground, which helps with his back pain. Then the old men take him to the hot springs so he can rest and recover. Lucius sees their scars and thinks they're mighty warriors when actually they got them in random everyday accidents. The men also share some sake with him, but as soon as it burns Lucius' throat he thinks it's poison and runs away. Eventually he finds Mommy and tells her he's been poisoned as he falls on the ground. Mommy has now studied enough Latin to understand him and makes him drink water from the hot springs, explaining it has healing properties. Lucius stands up thinking he's better, but the sake still makes him dizzy and he falls on top of Mommy, causing both of them to fall into the spring and go to ancient Rome. When they wake up, Caonius immediately hits on Mommy and tries to take her away, only to be stopped by Antoninus. Afterward Lucius goes home to start packing, planning to run away to avoid getting executed for having principles. Mommy tries to go after him to stop him only to get lost in town. At that moment she hears a man reading the latest political updates and remembers something from her history books. Meanwhile in the present, the old guys see Mommy's hat in the water and jump in to rescue her, causing them to be dragged down as well. Back to Lucius, he's wandering out of town and eventually finds a hot spring like the one he saw in Japan. Unfortunately he's soon found by soldiers, who send him back to his house. Mommy receives him with a hug and tells him that Antoninus will be sent to the provinces to deal with the rebels. She thinks Caonius did it as revenge because Antoninus saved her, but according to history this is wrong, Caonius is supposed to be the one that goes to the provinces and dies of the plague, causing Antoninus to take over the throne. It seems her presence here has changed history. Later Lucius goes to confront Caonius, whose arrogant comments confirm he'll be an awful leader. 
Lucius feels he's failed his people and he's a loser who can't come up with his own ideas, but Mommy gives him a heartfelt speech to point out he is smart and innovative because he only saw Japan yet he was able to recreate everything in Rome with his own hands. Now inspired, Lucius runs to see Hadrianus and says he wants to build a bathhouse on the battlefield that will help their soldiers recover. That way they'll finally win the battle and Antoninus won't have to leave to the provinces. Hadrianus approves the project, not sure if believing Lucius when he says it was Antoninus' idea. Then Lucius and Mommy go to the warm area he found the other day to start building, but they don't have enough slaves to make progress. At that moment the soldiers show up with the old men from modern Japan, who immediately agree to help and have an idea to accelerate the process. Instead of building a full bathhouse which would take years, they start building small shacks where the wounded men can rest on the warm ground to recover from their injuries. They also dig a hole in the ground big enough for a hot spring that can fit a bunch of soldiers at a time. As days pass, they build more and more shacks and help more soldiers, which is truly helping them keep up in battle. Mommy also starts drawing signs, saying Lucius has inspired her to chase her dream again. After lots of hard work, the Romans finally win the battle and have a big celebration in the hot spring. That evening, Mommy and Lucius have a sweet moment together. Lucius smiles at her for the first time, which makes Mommy cry. Her body starts fading and Lucius realizes he had been crying every time he was sent back to Rome. Mommy says a final goodbye and is sent back to Japan together with the old men. A few days later, Hadrianus makes a public ceremony to congratulate Antoninus for his great idea and announces he'll send Caonius to the provinces instead. He also says Lucius deserves to be recognized and congratulates him in front of everyone, making Lucius cry. In the present, Mommy is happy to finally get her manga accepted by an editor, who is impressed by her story based on Lucius. On her way home, she's shocked to see Lucius come out of a fountain.